What do you think is the biggest secret being kept from mankind? My mother is a corona denier, and these chat groups that she's in only spread lies. I mean only literally here, because she has not told me a single thing yet which can't be instantly debunked. It would kind of make sense if they only said that masks might be unhealthy because they don't know better, or that the pandemic isn't as bad as it is shown in the news. But why are they saying that like three children already died by suffocation because of the mask? The worst was when there was a big demonstration in Berlin where they wanted to overthrow the government. Apparently there were 1.3 participants, including Trump and Putin, and the German government was seen driving to the airport to escape. None of these things were true, obviously. The conspiracy theory here is that Russia is spreading these lies to weaken Western democracies. Story 2. We've already made alien contact and they want nothing to do with us. To say it isn't possible to travel incredible distances based on the physics we've currently discovered is like a man telling his friend 2,000 years ago that a cell phone is impossible because their scientists have no proof that it is. For all we know, they could be millions of years more advanced than us. At that point, it will be like waving your hand above an ant and them not noticing you. We're talking billions of galaxies, then bring in the possibility of multiple universes, and we're the only advanced ones? It takes a really puny brain to think that way. Story 3. The greatest unknown. That the overarching supposition of TV news, that the natural state of things is to go well and will do so if the corrupt and the stupid are continually exposed, is the greatest falsehood ever and that it persists only because the corrupt and stupid make obscene amounts of money by perpetrating belief in it. The availability of TV news to censor all sustained deep analysis of its effects on society is the greatest existential threat to liberal democracy. Read Virginia Postal's works. Interesting. Might have to look into that out of curiosity, but I do have to say, I'm pretty interested in just what kind of conspiracy wild nonsense we're really going to get into in this thread. Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Story 4. That none of this is even real. That we are living through a multifaceted holographic projection on the 2D surface of a black hole so that our emergent minds can be born into the ethereal plane and understand the surroundings of meta-existence. That if Jesus did exist, the church would not accept any actual second coming of the Messiah because they'd then lose their power. I finally realized just the other day, after 30 years of being a Christian, that when the persecution comes to the church, it won't be from the atheists or the liberals, it will be from other so-called Christians. That we're actually not real, but in a simulation, so we actually can't prove that we aren't. This is a valid philosophical theory. Our computers are advanced enough to run simulations. Things got weird back in 2012 that I think whoever is running our simulation went off to school and their siblings are playing with it. Humans aren't supposed to sleep all eight hours at once. We are supposed to take several shorter rest times during the day. Industrialization and the concept of the 9 to 5 workday made this eight hour rest period a reality. Yeah, I've heard that back in the day, people would wake up for a few hours in the middle of the night, and that was often prime boning time. Oh, the things we've lost in this modern society. The question should be who is keeping the secret from mankind? We are doing it to ourselves. Like, take high doses of vitamin D3. It obviously have great value to anyone looking closely, but we are so enamored of our medical profession that we can't see the obvious. Undertaker deliberately threw mankind off hell in a cell, and the whole scene was pre-planned by the WWF organizers. Mankind was not told about it. There is no doubt this one was planned. Foley has even gone on record about it. What was not planned was Undertaker throwing him through the cell. At that point, you can see Taker Freeze worried he might have accidentally killed Foley. Took me a few sentences to realize this was about wrestling. Wrestling sounds absolutely weird to non-fans. The fact that the Mormon church is faked. It's based on a ton of lies and little to no truth. The church also doesn't need money. If they didn't get money, they would be fine for over a decade. One example of the church being faked is that in their Book of Mormon, it says that the earth is a thousand years old. My family cracked this secret and left last year after being in it for over 40 years. I suggest looking all that stuff up. It's really fascinating. If you think the Mormon church is fake, just wait until I tell you about all the other churches. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Christian fans, but I had to make the joke. It was right there for me. We cool? 
where we actually are in space travel tech, or just our reach in the solar system in general. No way they stopped making ludicrously expensive crafts. What Meatloaf Wouldn't Do for Love. That is explained in the song as released in physical media, but is edited from the song when played on the radio to make the song shorter. Here is what he won't do for love. Lorraine Crosby, I know the territory I've been around. It'll all turn to dust and will all fall down. Sooner or later, you'll be screwing around. Meatloaf, I won't do that. No, I won't do that. Anything for love, but I won't do that. Well, you see, if I smoke a F-ton of pot and sometimes DMT and watch Ancient Aliens, I become convinced that aliens are actually Bigfoot and that JFK actually had intercourse with a Martian Marilyn Bond robot and divulged all our country's biggest secrets to her and that's why we had to get to the moon so desperately because the moon was actually where a naughty naughty drug is born. That anti-mask propaganda is supported by China and Russia to make Americans weaker. Yes, but at the same time, it's America's fault for breeding ignorance to such a level that foreign entities could take advantage of it so easily. This is the price America will pay for subverting the education of its masses and for glorifying ignorance. What made the population easy to control by internal entities also made them easy to control by foreign entities. People that are secretly alive, but dead for the public life and vice versa. I like to believe Kim Jong-un is already dead. The person posing for the pictures after his surgery is a doppelganger set up by his evil sister, King Myo Jong, who's always been the real mastermind. Honestly, I'm sure North Korea would love people to believe that, or to believe that any of the people in charge know what they are doing. Don't get me wrong, they are dangerous, but also, like, you know what? I don't know enough about foreign politics in North Korea to not make myself look dumb. Er. When I was younger, I read a story in the news of a company that had come up with a bacteria that they would put into your mouth. This bacteria was harmless to people, but ate the bacteria that damages our teeth. It would have destroyed the dental industry. For some reason, I never saw it again. They were also coming out with a vaccine that makes your antibodies blind to nicotine, making them too large to enter the brain. This would have destroyed the tobacco industry. I haven't heard anything about this in a decade. The rich buying art to avoid taxes. It's amazing how much nonsense rich folks get away with just because the details are boring. When my accounting classes got around to the calculations for speculative derivatives and hedge fund managing, I was rather astounded because it was just gambling with fancier math. It's just betting on the yen to rise in comparison to the euro or whatever, but the math is so convoluted that it's treated like investing instead of gambling that there are people in the world that are richer than the known richest person in the world. If you are that rich, you can afford to be anonymous too. I'm not saying that Jeff Bezos isn't rich, I'm sure he is. I just believe that there are a tiny group of people that have more wealth than Bezos, that they've used that wealth to hide the fact that they are that wealthy from the world. Location of all these hot singles in my area. Perhaps the hot single is you. True history, I genuinely believe that there have been things discovered in the past that tell a different story of the past and are intentionally hidden. History is written by the winners. Edit. Guys, this is a quote. I don't mean it as an absolute truth and was most likely referred to past history, not modern history. I know. When I wrote this, I was thinking about a Roman war or something like that where the enemies are dead, so the only ones who can narrate the story are who didn't die. The winners. Were there seriously people commenting on that quote who didn't realize that? Uh, folks, uh, never mind. Certainly one of the biggest is Stanley Mayer's water fuel cell that he used to build a water-fueled car. He was at a restaurant with his brother and two investigators when he got up and ran outside saying, they poisoned me and died. That most conspiracy theories are actually the conspiracy in of itself that certain parties are creating crazy conspiracies to confuse the masses between reality and fiction to make them more easily controlled and manipulated. I know I'm reading these in a bit of an overblown, melodramatic manner that sounds like I'm poking fun, and I am to a degree, but I'm not judging if they're true or not, mostly, but more just, how on earth do you read these any other way, you know? Plus, I'm an entertainer, not your teacher. I poke fun in a harmless way, I hope, and plenty of jabs aimed my way too. Sorry, I had to get that off my chest.
I am an anti-conspiracy theorist. I believe there is no higher power that controls everything, neither that everything is their plan. On the contrary, I believe that nobody has an effing idea of what they are doing. Nobody has really power. Nobody can really control anything. Everybody feels that the world is led by somebody slash something else. Everybody does their best to change things, maybe also for their interest, but they feel that everything is bigger than them to really be in full control. They only manage to make small, meaningless changes to their limited area of influence, which they feel is too small to fully meet their goals. No matter if you are the CEO of a small company, Bill Gates, a rich sultan, a king, or a small mayor, this is true at any level of the society and of the world. Almost everybody feels to be an imposter at their place. They are all all right. We are a beehive without queen bee, a ship without captain, a train without machinist. At the higher level, somebody must have understood this, but they are far from telling everybody. But there is a multinational organ harvesting organization to keep the oligarchs always healthy. Some of them are hidden away, already reaching over 200 years old. The war between nations are only there to control a population. Any person that causes deviation to the oligarch master plan always results in death or missing. How much wealth is making major political decisions rather than democracy? Either that or how much the planet is already effed from climate change. The government doesn't actually care about your grandmother's secret cherry pie recipe. Like hell they don't. I've seen them in their black SUVs searching for it. Well, they'll never get it. Never! That with all of the alliances between nations, the trade deals, economic policies, mission statements, enmities, backroom deals, spy networks, wars, etc., the powerful don't have the amount of control or vision that we like to believe that they have. The big secret is that it's all a lie. The only thing holding civilization together is that the vast majority of people think that even though the powerful are corrupt, they are at least competent to hold civilization together. They are not. 2020 is just a taste of that reality. Aliens and wealthy elite secret society that control the world and geared for financial and personal ideological gain. But if this is true and there are people at the top, then it's not for financial gain. If they were that elite, money and finance no longer exists for them. They can have whatever they want, whenever they want. There's no point having a bunch of paper sitting there if you're already the top of the world. It's just so they can keep us working and producing electricity, food, and ideas that fuel their lavish lifestyle. So not so much financial gain at that point, but just simply the ability to live there 100 years in opulence. Where did Cotton Eye Joe come from? And where did he go? Top 10 questions scientists still can't answer. The term Cotton Joe refers to an average Joe that works in a coal mine. When he returns to the sunlight, the coal covers his clothes and body except for his eyes which seem bright white in comparison to the rest of his body. As such, Cotton Eye Joe went home to take a shower and he came from the coal mines. What? Is that what that's about? Man, that makes me almost not hate that song anymore, but I still do. The next possible Earth-ending force. There's a very strong possibility that NASA and the space industry know what it is and when it will happen, but won't inform the general public until it passes altogether or, if there is absolute certainty, it will occur minutes before it happens. It is because there would be literally nothing we could do about it and they would not want to cause major havoc in our last minutes alive. Not so much a secret, but I think there are events that happened in the past we'll never know about that would blow our minds. Same thing for people who are interesting, incredible, unique, super talented, etc. that were never documented. Recording history has always been shady at best, especially the further back you go. I bet even if we went back 150 years, there would be things that occurred that would be historically incredible, but since weren't they recorded, we'll never know about them. I heard about a Chinese guy who's apparently sold some sort of immortal medication, something that could stop our body to get old and it was viable. I think this, this guy said he was around 90 years old, but he looked like a 40-year-old dude. I didn't believe it was true, so I just ignored it. Two days later, there wasn't any information left about it, and I never heard of this guy again. Maybe because that sounds like a load of crap. <laughs> Sorry. It's a fun thought, but that just, that's not how things work. 
Everything is an endless cycle. Civilization has existed on the planet before, died out, and being born again. Probably a few times. This is the ultimate nature of the universe itself. It beats out, expands, then breathes in, implodes, then breathes out again, probably improving on itself little by little with every new breath. The only person who wrote about aliens was Plato, and he was using it as an analogy. We know that ancient civilization got reset with the Bronze Age collapse. It's not a secret for mankind at all. Eventually, societies begin to rebuild themselves. It wasn't out of nowhere so much as writing was scarce for a few centuries, so there are gaps in the written record. There's no evidence at all of a global civilization. Archaeology has it all fairly mapped out at this point. 2020 really is the series finale. Maybe just the pilot episode of a much more dramatic series. We still haven't properly covered climate change, antibiotic resistance, collapse of classic capitalism, and we are still in this generation's first global pandemic. Growing populations, larger wealth divides, loss of power of the people, growing demand for useless crap around the world can almost guarantee more action-packed pandemics coming to a screen near you. The thing that gets me is we say this generation's first global pandemic because since this is our generation, that means it's the only one that actually counts. Previous generations that went through this crap? Nah, they weren't the main characters. I don't mean to belittle what we've gone through. It's been rough and wild. Just a thought I had. I guess this isn't a secret, but humanity seems to forget quite often. There is next to no privacy in the modern age. If you're reading this, your information, search histories, shopping trends, personal connections, etc. are currently being monitored and sold in the information trade. Facebook does not give a crap about your aunt's pie recipes, but they'll be the first ones to start advertising the ingredients. Biggest secret being I know of is probably that fat bastard who sneaks into my house at night and takes credit for all the gifts I've gotten for everyone. That we do not know it all and that we will never know it all. Mankind only knows what mankind has been designed to know. Just like the human eye can only see what the human eye is capable of seeing. The eye cannot see what a telescope can see and it never will. Not really secrets, but we will never solve climate change, not for lack of technology, simply because humans are unlikely to adopt a new way of doing things in time to stop it. Every major company in the world is deep in debt and their infrastructures are flawed. Which means, if you pull back the curtains far enough, you realize they are being held together with duct tape and bubblegum. That money is a human construct. It's just crap we made up. We don't actually need it, and there's no need for it to be the foundation of all aspects of society. We do need some kind of economic system which would allow for barter and trade, but money and the power it holds over almost everyone is largely unnecessary. This planet has, or rather had, a problem which was this. Most of the people living on it were unhappy for pretty much of the time. Many solutions were suggested for this problem, but most of these were largely concerned with the movement of small green pieces of paper, which was odd because on the whole, it wasn't the small pieces of paper that were unhappy. Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Exactly! We don't need money! The main thing we need is our towel. Now, let's get out of here. I know about this awesome restaurant. Perverts and psychopaths run the world. That coexistence of multiple realms once called magic that we've turned away from and forgotten about. The biggest thing being kept from mankind is the truth. Division among the masses has made us blind. They pit us against each other, red and blue, white and colored, rich and poor, government and we the people. They can lock down our body, but they can't lock down our minds. Was that too much? That was probably too much. You know... I stand by it. Also, I cut out most of my coffee intake yesterday, and I'm just, I'm really in a mood. Nothing. I doubt if any government, for example, is competent enough to get away with it. This. Trump tweeted pictures taken by spy satellites, location of Navy ships, etc. If there was a big conspiracy hidden for the public, he would have spoke about it already. But nothing matters. You are a speck of dust in the universe. Nothing you do matters. We are all walking piles of goop held together by bones and flesh. People make up governments and religions so that we won't stray our entire lives feeling hopeless. Sweet dreams, you beautiful pieces of nothing. Look, 
If there isn't a huge cosmological purpose, that doesn't mean that nothing matters. It means that your perception of what matters, your life, the lives of others you affect, matter more than anything else because you've created that purpose. If the universe has no purpose, then the purpose you've created for yourself is more important than ever. And that's not me being a big goober about this stuff. I mean it. I probably didn't put it the best, but I mean it. Nothing is meaningless if you give it meaning. Climate change is much, much, much worse than they are letting on and are slowly changing predictions to ease us into how awful it's going to be. Also, aliens. Humans accelerated way too quickly in the 1900s for aliens not to be involved. Most government systems would work out just fine if not for the shameful amount of idiots incapable of following simple instructions, like use a mask, so now we have to idiot-proof every social structure because the average middle-class person is so sheltered stupid and have a sense of self-preservation of a baby in a bear cage, otherwise we would have death by stupid everywhere. Returning to monkey is a legitimate theory. Actual technology is being suppressed due to capitalism. It is much more profitable for businesses to suppress new technology so that their owners keep making bank. With ExxonMobil being a prime example, had aliens been involved, we would already be colonizing other planets by the 1970s. That in every country on the planet, there are groups of criminals who are clever and resourceful enough to break the law with impunity. Law enforcement and intelligence agencies or people within them may suspect them or even know in detail what they are doing but cannot afford for one reason or another to take them down. Particular individuals may be taken down with luck but are only replaced by different ones. Stevie Wonder can see. The Earth is indeed not flat. No one is keeping this a secret. It's being shouted from the rooftops. We have many resources to make the world a better place. Clean energy, affordable housing and food, etc. But we don't, because capitalists want stocks. 3D printers existed in the 20th century. I don't know from when exactly and I'm too lazy to research it, but it wasn't available to anyone because it was trademarked. Battery cars were also a thing back then, but wasn't manufactured because of capitalists. See-through solar panels exist from before 2014, but again, no one uses it. If rich people donated the same amount of money they did to rebuild Notre Dame, we could clean the oceans. I could go on all day with this. So, the big secret is that rich people suck. Well, I guess that rich people suck even more than we realize, which is saying a lot because, wow, do rich people typically suck. Clean cars and better batteries can be made, but manufacturers refuse to do it because it means less money for them. That bacteria these scientists create that eat plastics in the ocean. Why isn't anyone talking about it anymore? A free-roaming, plastic-eating bacteria would end our civilization. Most medical-slash-food packaging depends on plastic not degrading. You guys might want to sit down for this. Lightsabers exist. I saw one in my mom's closet before, and I played with it. But I never saw it again after. DIA propaganda slash manipulation techniques in the extent of their reach. The only reason we know about MK Ultra be is because it didn't work. Cure for cancer, drug companies and healthcare benefits greatly from treatments, drugs, long-term care, funeral services, and research companies. If cancer is cured, then they will lose all the research money that is given by people, companies, and other government programs. Drug companies benefit the most from cancer patients. I believe if they have one, they won't expose it because one of their big cash cows will be gone. We have drugs to sustain live to a livable standard and most things after all decades, but yet nothing for cancer but surgery, death, and some treatments that cause all these other side effects. Okay, I have friends who could answer this better because they are in medical fields, but the fact is cancer is more complicated. Making an all-out cure for all cancers isn't as clean cut as people seem to think it should be. It's almost like this kind of stuff requires a really tough-to-get degree to fully understand. The big pharma cancer conspiracy is dumb. If you go and ask people who work with cancer patients, research cancer, develop cancer treatments, and basically occupy any position capable of curing cancer, you'll find that lots of them were literally driven to those positions by the experience of seeing their favorite person die of cancer. Money is a pretty weak motivator compared to things like love, death, and anger. At some point, the pharma CEO running the cover-up will be diagnosed with cancer. How long will he keep hiding the cure? Wow, I didn't even look ahead. That was just there. I think there is no cure for asthma because pharmaceutical companies want you to keep paying for medications just so you can breathe. 
I have no medical proof for this, but you never hear about trying to find a cure for asthma or anything like that. I'm guessing they do the same for other things as well. Oh my god, the aliens! Maybe humans are cool but selfish and competitive to the point of death, so they make innovations and secret military flying things? No, the more likely option is that alien races came and happened to be found by the higher-ups of society and the aliens were smart enough to progress humanity, but not smart enough to realize politicians were corrupt and not smart enough to escape. Also, the aliens look like slightly deformed humans because we are the min-maxed shape. Think, if something is up, it's not going to be something so popular and crazy, it's going to be something simple but extreme, not hyper-intelligent space humanoids captured by politicians. Alternate sources to petrol have definitely been discovered, or engines that can run on other alternatives. And the moment they were created, they'd have been bought out by fuel companies. All those side-loading washing machines that were pushed on us don't actually clean more efficiently. They just don't clean. Same with the energy-efficient dryers. Or maybe you need to learn how to properly load your laundry, because I've never had a problem with them. The true purpose of JFK's assassination alongside other mysterious deaths and disappearances. The amount of abuse and corruption that occurs across the board in positions of power. That there exists some concise mathematical expression that fundamentally describes reality, like, what is the fabric of existence, old chap? Well now, good sir, it's NR squared, of course! I'm not sure how to word it, but like, a way of using notation to explain why math and logic and numbers and dimensions exist the way they do. It would probably be some new way of thinking about reality. Aliens! There is proof that people still think they are just a crazy tinfoil hat phenomenon. Also, people frequently get the definition of alien wrong. When they hear alien, they think of weird green thing, but they are just something that we have never seen or experienced before. So to people who have never left Norway, an Australian blue-ringed octopus would be alien to them. But space creatures in advanced life, I believe, are real. It's either that aliens exist and they know about us, or that we're the aliens not native to Earth at all, possibly ancestors of an old Martian race who came here to escape war, famine, or another disaster that made Mars uninhabitable. Mars is long dead, but there's evidence to suggest it could have once held life. They won't ever tell us. It would cause absolute chaos if they did. Who is they in this scenario? The Martians? The President? Who came here back before recorded history as aliens and kept this secret? Probably that everyone can become a monster or a saint, and there is no such thing as nature in nature versus nurture dilemma. It's all nurture. Everyone is saying aliens, but I don't think aliens are a secret. They are out there somewhere, which is almost a mathematical fact. Also, many governments, including the United States, have admitted very openly that there have been instances of UFO encounters around the world. Are those two things connected? Maybe not. It's entirely possible we are the most intelligent life forms in the universe, or any other life form is millions of light years away, but there still are certainly aliens somewhere. That scientists have already cracked the biochemical reversal of the process of aging. The planetary systems cannot handle a situation where people would now live 300 years in terms of space, food supply, and economy. So, it's been shelved. I like how many things people think scientists have secretly discovered, but humanity just isn't ready. If one scientist who apparently just works for the government discovered this, then others would, and they would just release it or try and make bank on it without regard for that. I don't know, this just never holds water. That the lizard people secretly running the world are just as inept as we are. Damn inbred lizards think they know everything. Just because you can swallow a house cat whole does not make you fit to rule. Human history. We as modern humans have come and gone in cycles for hundreds of thousands of years. Aliens and craft come from inner earth caverns, etc. No, it's not a hollow egg. Cave systems are massive. There is no grand conspiracy or grand plan or any shadow powerful order. Everything is chaotic and random and occasionally there are people who are greatly benefited by the chaos and it's only because of confirmation bias and history being written by the winners that we think there is a thread. At best, you have a government conspiracy, but worldwide, absolutely no chance. And if you don't believe it, try project managing 10 plus people and tell them not to tell anyone else.
Pigeons are literal government spies. Don't ever be friends with one. Don't feed them, talk to them, or even look at them. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Call your lawyer before contact with a pigeon. What the hell is being kept in Area 51 and all the other government-run areas? And extraterrestrial life? We've had released footage of UFO forever, and the government tried to re-release some footage, further confirming the footage, in, like, April of this year. There was a podcast I listened to that had the guy who took the photo talking on it. I just want absolute confirmation on whether or not they're real. I'll be satisfied with either yes or no. I don't really care what the answer is. I just want an absolute answer. Okay, the answer is yes. There you go. I'm positive. It's yes. Unless it's no. No. You know what? Yes. Or no. Hard maybe? That our existence is sustainable and consistent with the actual global economic model and energy resources, yes, even solar, with just a bit higher waste recycling. All cancers are curable, but pharmaceutical companies profit too much from giving you slow partial treatments that don't actually cure it. We will never get a cure for AIDS. We will only find ways to lessen the effects of it because medicine brings in money and a cure doesn't after a while. Psychological weapons are in use and they are used to sway your opinions subconsciously. This is how major political elections are won. That the richest and most powerful are fully aware of the global devastation coming from climate change and are prepared for it. A science student came up with a way to make rechargeable batteries that have been charged over 10,000 times and still haven't started to go bad. This was a few years ago, and it had not been mentioned in the news since. Because something like that takes a lot of testing, parallel studies, and all kinds of other stuff before it's something that we could reliably produce on a level to benefit society. Huge scientific advances take time before they become available to the public. Do you know how long it took before augmented reality products like Google Glass came out from their first mention in popular science? Like a friggin' decade, and that's with Google going after it. The most what-the-f moment with your siblings. I was out on a car ride with my dad, and we arrived back at the house at like 3 a.m. My front door opens straight into my kitchen, and I throw open the door expecting an empty kitchen, only to see my brother, buck butt naked, standing in front of the sink. I scream, why the F are you naked? He scrambles back to the shower. Apparently he was mid-shower, his back hurt, so he went to the kitchen and started heating water for a hot water bottle for his back, and just stopped to have a snack or something while waiting for the water to boil, all while leaving the shower running. My dad still laughs about it. Edit. Yes, 3 a.m. My family keeps odd hours, especially back when we were at school and it was summer break. What else are you supposed to do when you get hungry? You get naked and eat. My brother tried to kill me. He was 13, I was 9. He was always a bully and picked on me relentlessly, but this day he threw me on the ground and started choking me with both hands. Not in a way like you see on TV when someone just squeezes your neck, but the correct way where you jam both thumbs into someone's trachea. Couldn't breathe, couldn't gasp, just felt cold, and my vision started to go tunnel vision, then black. When I came to, my mom had hit him over the head with a broom. I don't remember much after that, but I'll never trust him. I like your mom. So do I. Probably when I was nine and my older brother was 13. We were home watching TV one day during the summer. He was flipping through the channels and stopped on an episode of Donahue that featured a male stripper right in the middle of his routine with an audience of middle-aged women cheering. He put the remote down and excitedly said, We are watching this. He's now married with two kids and is aspiring to be a Baptist minister. He's gay. So, so gay. No, he prayed it away. Overwrote my save file to start a new game. Bastard, I will never forgive you. My little brother did the bottle glitch over the Megaton Hammer in Zelda Ocarina of Time, replaced the hammer with a bottle. When I couldn't get past a certain section of the game due to having no hammer, I confronted him and asked why my hammer was a bottle. He swore that he didn't know why, but I knew. I always knew. Twenty years later, he brings it up and says that he did it on purpose because he was mad at me. Pretend to have let it pass. Water under the bridge. Grow and remain close through your twilight years. Then one day, as he reaches for his heart medication, he'll find the hammer in place of the bottle and know the debt is paid. It is interesting that thus far we've covered the gamut of a brother trying to literally kill an OP to now a brother goofing up a save file for a frankly overrated Zelda game. 
Now, am I just saying that to get the comments all riled up, or am I really the Link's Awakening loving heathen I appear to be? Sister logged into my RuneScape account and finished the Dragon Slayer quest that ten-year-old me with limited playtime had spent months to gear up for. I was devastated. I once asked my brother for help beating one boss in a Kirby game, and what does he do? Finishes the rest of the goddamn game. What the heck, bro? Why would have given you one of the three accounts on it when I was done with it myself, but no! Edit, why am I getting downvoted for Squeak Squad? I've heard it's not the best Kirby game by any means, but it was the first one I ever played. I never got a chance to play any of the other ones. I got quite a late start in life. This reminds me of a thing that happened to me a long while ago. I was fighting Dynablade, bird boss, from Kirby, and because I was an idiot kid, I didn't realize that the boss only took damage from the head, so I couldn't beat it. I kept attacking the body. I asked a brother of mine who was three to four years older than me to beat it. Somehow, he one-shot the boss with one attack. Must have been a glitch or something. I was amazed and couldn't believe it. He just looked at me like I was an idiot because the boss was so easy for him. I was winning a watermelon eating contest. My sister, realizing she could never beat me, picked up the half watermelon and bashed me in the back of the head with it, knocking me out cold. Did she actually use your loss of consciousness to catch up and eat more watermelon than you? Because if not, technically you still won because you were leading prohibitively at the suspension of play caused by the injury. I haven't reviewed the most recent update on the official international watermelon eating competition rules, but I will put this in my pocket and start calling it a win. When I was younger, I was playing outside when I heard my little brother giggling like a maniac around the other side of the house in the backyard. I went to see what was going on, and he was gleefully digging into my dog's open mouth as the dog was lapping it up while dangerously close to his doodle. Edit. A bonus story. I'll tell you about the time my brother almost caught me smoking when I was in high school. There's a barn across from a small pond by my house, and one winter my friend Murph and I were sparking up on the upper floor. We hear the dogs get let outside and someone mumbling, and we peek out the window so that we can keep tabs on whoever is outside now. My little brother is walking towards the frozen pond with a pickaxe and then begins to break apart the ice. After he chopped it up a bit, he crouches down like a goddamn monkey, takes a chunk of pond ice, and begins eating it while looking back and forth to make sure nothing sneaked up on him while he ate. It was like watching the goddamn Nature Channel. Edit 2. Okay, let's talk about my stepbrother for a second since this got so popular. Hopefully people are still reading this because this dude is a goldmine of dumb crap. Not as much what the F material, more just how dumb is this dude kind of stuff. Not many are stories I can make into something of length, so I'll just do snippets. He brought a blank Uzi over to my house and asked me if I could fire it out the room of my window. I told him, no, it's going to sound like you're firing an effing gun. He did it anyway and then was shocked that it sounded so loud. To cover his tracks, he went downstairs to see if my family heard. He came back up later saying, I told them we were popping balloons with a smug smile on his face. He once offered me $100 to blow up a weather balloon in my room until it popped. I declined. In the dead of winter, he propped a ladder up against my roof and then army crawled up the icy shingles with two butter knives as climbing tools and then began pounding on my window to let him in because it was cold outside. He bought one of those hoverboards, lit two smoke bombs, and rode it while spinning in circles as I filmed him until he started coughing so bad he couldn't keep going. He regularly buys designer clothes like polo shirts and Nike shoes and the like. These clothes usually look stupid as hell, like the white polo he bought with a giant tree with a sun behind it. Often giving them to me after a week because, nah man, I don't want these, what was I thinking? One time he asked me to drive him to Plato's Closet to sell off two duffel bags full of stuff like this. I'll never forget his gangster swagger walk back to my car and him proudly announcing, Man, I got 20 bucks! He once was trying to convince me to help him put a trampoline on the roof so he could use it to jump off said roof into the pond nearby. Took a lot of convincing to explain that he won't make a jump that far. Afterwards, he wanted to have the trampoline on the ground instead, then I had to explain how, in the best case scenario, he simply misses and hurts himself, but more likely head go right through it and break his legs. The roof is on the second story of the house on that side of the yard. This is the best one in the thread. Maybe I just grew up in a little bit of a weirder house, but honestly, this all sounds like pretty normal sibling behavior. Though, to be fair, every time I tell stories about my past, I do tend to get some pretty weird looks from my partner. 
Apparently, not many kids would come home to sever deer heads in the driveway right in front of the bait shop attached to the garage. Came downstairs from being asleep. Living room is in disarray. Blood drops are on the floor, and I see little flecks here and there on the wall. I say to my girlfriend, what the duck happened? Concerned someone got injured or something. Your brothers had a scissors fight, she tells me. A scissors fight? Yes, those two ducking brain surgeons took up craft scissors and went at each other in my living room while my no-dot horrified girlfriend watched on in shock and awe. They were gone by the time I woke up, thank Christ, but the evidence was hard to miss. My mom was recently divorced and had a friend with a daughter my age. Let's call him Mark. The daughter and I were both 14 and got a lot of alone time together, so obviously there was some mutual experimenting. Well, it got really weird about two years later when my mom and Mark announced they were getting married and I was going to have a new stepsister. Never trust daughters who are called Mark. What a story. My sister cut my hanky down thing that connects my upper lip with my gums with a pair of scissors while I was asleep. The internet tells me this is called a frenulum. We were not the best of friends growing up. Ah, I knew I'd find a logical response here somewhere. My half-siblings are nine and ten years younger than me. One Sunday morning, I woke up to laughter and wee sounds coming from downstairs. I went to investigate and found that they had emptied a carton of milk through which they were now sliding around on the floor naked. I'm imagining you're in your 40s. Do you mean right now or when the incident took place? LOL. When I was about 14, my parents told my brother, age 13, to take my sister and I for a walk for an hour. I think my parents wanted some private time. He took us for a walk, all right. We were gone for 12 hours. My parents were frantic and the police were looking for us. God knows what he was thinking, but he's always been a bit of an idiot. Did he stubbornly refuse to go back after an hour? Did you all start walking and taking random turns? The simplest thing probably would have been to go to a park for an hour. I don't remember the details clearly, but I do remember that we just kept walking. Like I said, my brother is an idiot. The time I came home from school and found a horse in the garden, which my brother had bought from a nearby campsite. Haha, <laughs> wonderful. He was 16 at the time. To this day, I still do not know how he got the horse on there. We lived in terraced housing, so garden access was through the house or the back gate, which led to a very narrow alley. All I know is, the next morning, it was gone. My little sister looked at me dead-eyed once and told me, You have demons in you. You need to get them out. Or something along those lines. I asked her what the F she was talking about, and she just kind of went back to doing her thing. The girl was like eight, so I don't think she was trying to troll me. Also, she ran my Game Boy Advance under running water once. That rat crap miscreant. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Hot Topic employees, what are your horror stories? This was my first job in my college town, and generally, I absolutely loved it. You're treated like some super cool mini celebrity by all the little mall rats, the management was generally great to their employees, and the work wasn't too hard in my small, low-volume store. However, there was the issue of Valentine's Day. That year, they were promoting all these different corsets and lingerie, as well as the Get In Our Pants campaign for the skinny jeans. Management wanted the employees to try and show the corsets not just as lingerie, but as fashion items, maybe paired with the skinny jeans. Increased sales and all. So there I am, Valentine's Day, in a black corset and tight black skinny jeans and boots. Way more naughty than 18-year-old me with a still-developing body was comfortable with. In comes Creepy McCreepster, a 50-plus-something dude who says he wants to buy something for his wife but wants some help picking it out. Not once did his eyes look at my face. The entire time I'm helping him, he's staring at my butter chest and making weird comments about how I remind him of his daughter or being uncomfortably comfortable telling me explicit details about his wife's body. Then he asks me to try it on and show him so he could see how it would look on his wife. Luckily, shy 18-year-old me awkwardly laughed it off and got him past the register and out of the store. I love that job, but Jesus, did it draw some weirdos. Ugh. Folks, I don't care what the person at a store is wearing. Treat them like a person and don't just leer and be creepy. It's a professional setting. And also, dude, she's your daughter's age. No. Former Hot Topic store manager here. At the height of the Twilight craze and when I was still a sales associate, we had a midnight release party for the first movie's DVD. 
people legitimately camped out in the mall to be at this event. Generic Twilight fans, 12 to 16 year old girls, their mothers, and the odd sprinkling of adults that were wildly out of place. Employees were encouraged to dress up in Twilight merch, but me being 17 and engrossed in the suburban punk rock lifestyle, I did not participate. My sales manager was not pleased about this, so she mosed, marked out of stock, an outfit for me. Girls sized small, I love boys who sparkle tee, that rode up like a crop top, the tightest jeans I've ever worn, and to top it all off, she aggressively applied eyeliner, sparkly eyeshadow, and body glitter all over me. And before anyone asks or makes the whole process into something naughty, she was in her mid-40s, overweight, and generally the most unpleasant person ever. It was humiliating, but the only saving grace is that I got so many phone numbers that night. I was drowning in high school girls who thought I was amazing. Nothing ever came of it, though. Worked at a Hot Topic in a mall in California. This was around the time My Little Pony took off and the bronies were becoming a thing. The biggest, fattest that I've ever seen in my life came in asking to see Fluttershy stuff. Smelled like Mountain Dew and shame and had a custom shirt with the pony in questions spread eagle on it in what I can only describe as a missionary position with a very realistic vagina spread. I immediately called security. A petite friend is currently a manager at one, and her issue is always a customer that becomes too often repeat customer obsessed with her or another female employee. Currently, a guy that swears they would have everything in common because he likes all the things in the store too, as if she curated it, and now has to stay 500 feet from the store. Please leave employees alone. They are not a product for you to obtain. They are not on display for you. They are paid to be nice to you, so don't read into that. Just let people work. Come on. Maybe not so much horror, but just terribly annoying slash cringy. One, I was wearing a Hellblazer shirt that had a cover of a new 52 revamp on it. I had two neckbeards come up and start trying to gatekeep me on if I was really a fan of Hellblazer slash John Constantine. It included the actual questions of, well, what's your favorite arc? Who's your favorite writer slash artist? Two, Halloween is coming up. It's the Halloween season after Suicide Squad came out, so we have both versions of the Joker's outfit, the other from The Dark Knight. Both versions were unreasonably expensive. In total, for the Dark Knight costume, if I remember correctly, it was about $200 altogether. Because you had to buy the coat, the undershirt, the pants, etc., the fabric of the costume was just a little bit better quality than the $50 version you get at any Halloween setup store. We had a guy come in about 30 minutes before we closed for the night and wanted to try on the Dark Knight version of the Joker's outfit. The costume was hanging up on the tallest rack, so it required me getting a pole and pulling down each one because the size he needed was a large and each component of the costume. He tried it on, enjoyed it, and wanted to buy it. I went ahead to go ring him up, and then when he saw the price of it, he started flipping out. He started complaining that he could find this costume in anywhere else that he wanted at a cheaper price. He wanted to know if there's any coupons or if I could give him my employee discount. I told him there's no way I could do that. He starts flipping out and says he needs his costume tomorrow and he doesn't have that money now. He took me about 45 minutes after closing to finally leave. He did not buy the costume. Even before Suicide Squad came out, working Halloween around Hot Topic was always cringy with all the Joker and Harley Quinn people. I never got why folks would complain like that to employees. You know they don't set those prices, have virtually no control over it, and generally have their own rules to follow. Write an email to Hot Topic, but just let the employees go home. They don't make enough money to put up with you. I've worked there for 13 years. So much weird, but that's just retail in general. Got a guy masturbating in women's shoes in the dressing room. People had intercourse in there more often than you'd be comfortable with. I worked for them when Columbine happened. We carried a brand of clothing back then called Serial Killer, which featured pop culture pics slash references and some edgy saying, like a picture of Bruce Lee that said revenge or something like that. The morning after Columbine happened, we got an email to pull all the Serial Killer clothing line off the sales floor, as well as every trench coat in the store. By the end of the day, I'd already had to call security twice due to people showing up at the store and harassing me for supporting those psychos and training the next ones. 
Then the TV network showed up and pretty much camped at the front of our store, harassing every customer as they walked in slash out, asking them why this dark lifestyle attracted them. The mall ended up having security just hang out in front of our store and walking our employees to their cars for a week afterward. Honestly, it was the best job I ever had. The company was really supportive at the corporate level. I still have friends that work there. They pretty much left me alone so long as I made sales, so I had carte blanche to set up my stores the way I wanted, even if it didn't look like the planned merchandise setups they sent out. I had direct access with every department, so if I felt my stores couldn't sell something they sent us, they'd let me transfer it somewhere else and vice versa, get more best sellers in. Honestly, if it wasn't for working every weekend and closing a lot of stuff, I would have continued working there. I worked for a Hot Topic for about seven years. My store was apparently THE juggalo store of the district, and I think the state. Working for that company as long as I did, I was pretty used to ignoring people's crappy taste, but the juggalos were different. This is in central Florida, so it's on average about 90 degrees most days and always humid as hell. These kids were always very overweight, wearing a massive black ICP tee, those ridiculous 30-pound black trip pants with huge pockets, and all the hardware, chains and straps hanging from them. And they were drenched in sweat. Their hygiene was almost always awful. They always seemed to show whenever a new ICP shirt or collectible would arrive and would smell up the store and pay in wadded up sweat-soaked money. It was just all around unpleasant. The smell would linger for a bit after they left. It was not pleasant. This is my time to shine. I was helping a lady at the Disney section. She was pretty particular about the things she wanted and was asking if they looked okay enough for her. Being my first job, I was really enthusiastic about being a salesperson, and I really do love Disney. So I was hyping her up the best I could, and we're laughing together, getting along really well. Then she says, yeah, I wanted to get all the same things as my boyfriend's baby mama. Is that weird? Literally, I did not know how to respond. I said it wasn't, and cashed her out quick. Not a horror story, but a ridiculous short one. I had a woman coming with her sleeping infant and screamed at me to turn off the music while she strolled around the store. I mean, if your baby is sleeping and you want them to continue, maybe don't come to browse the store where you can hear music blasting from the other side of the mall. I don't know what to tell you. I get the frustration. You have a kid, and a lot of the stuff you like to do in life is suddenly a lot harder to do. Going to the store is harder. Going to the movies and shows is way harder. Life is tough for a parent, so I sympathize. That said, you also can't always expect the world to accommodate your every want to make it easier. Sorry. My sister worked at one for a little while. One day, two grown men were fighting over a pop. It's like a collectible figure. Like a legit fight. She said it was like the comic book guy from The Simpsons fighting another comic book guy from The Simpsons. My sister called mall security and noped the hell out of their way. Neither one of them got the pop. My sister had to put all the stuff back that they knocked over. Oof. Serious. What is the creepiest or most unexplained thing that's happened to you that you still think about to this day? I was living in Boston. I woke up at 3 a.m. or so by my cat jumping on my bed and curling in between my calf muscles and going to sleep. My cat would do this every night since I was five years old. That was his spot. It was something I was very familiar with. Thing is, my cat was living with my parents on the West Coast, so I couldn't understand what the hell I just felt. But I knew it was my cat. I just figured I was dreaming. Got a call from my parents the following morning that my cat died around midnight the previous night. Three hours behind since I was on the East coast. Guess that was my cat traveling to Boston to come see me one last time. Edit, after so many replies, I gotta say this. Really, I wasn't dreaming. I remember it quite well. I said maybe I was dreaming because I'm doubtful of myself, but thinking back, yeah, I was wide awake and realized my experience. Despite being a fun believer in ghosts, suspension of disbelief, I haven't had any other experiences other than this. This is my own experience, and I expect and appreciate the doubts, but call it what you will. Maybe around age 14, early 90s. We were traveling from Texas up to Tacoma, Washington. We were about out of money, almost out of gas, no food, stuck in Chico, California. I sat in the car while mom took my younger sister to a restroom at a gas station. I was riddled with anxiety about her situation and looking down. The car door opened and I looked up. A lady that looked like a brown-haired Brady mom sat in the seat and faced me. She said, it seems like you're down on your luck. Take this and give it to your mom. 
Tell her to pay it forward some day to someone who needs it. I looked down into my hand, and there was a $100 bill. I looked up, and she had disappeared. Nowhere in the parking lot, just vanished. I cried. When my mom came back, I told her what happened, and she cried. We got gas. There was a guy selling oranges on the side of the road, and we bought a bag and went to a local park and had a part of the river with a little spillway dam and went swimming and ate oranges for a couple of hours before getting back on the road. I never saw the lady again, but she saved us, and we did make it up to Tacoma to start our new life. Thank you, stranger lady with invisible powers. We never forgot your kindness. Random acts of kindness like this are so great to hear about. If you have the ability to just help out a stranger with no expectation of thanks or anything, I recommend it. That kind of generosity is contagious and makes the world a better place. College, I was roommates with my childhood best friend for about two years. We were very trusting with each other. We would go into each other's rooms freely and grab whatever we needed. To borrow clothes, hairbrush, perfume, etc. No questions asked, just a knock if we were in the room to let each other know we were going in. Our rooms are across the hall from each other, with the hall facing the kitchen. So, from the kitchen, you could see down the hall where our rooms were. At the time, my friend had very long black hair, and she's very fair-skinned. One day, I get home from work, with my headphones in my ear, talking to my mom about my day. I go into the kitchen to grab a snack. I see her walk out of her room and go into mine, leave my room, and go back into hers. She looked like she just got out of the shower. Her hair was soaking wet, and she was wrapped in a white towel. Her long, black, wet hair is what I distinctly remember. Also, she made no eye contact with me, but I didn't think it was weird. I didn't say anything to her since borrowing each other's stuff was normal. I'm still on the phone with my mom, so I don't think much of it. I grab my snack, hang out with my mom, and go into my room to watch TV. I figure she's getting ready to go somewhere and we'll talk later. About an hour passes and I go to the kitchen to clean the plate I ate on. I see her in the kitchen making something to eat and I tell her, Hey, what did you grab from my room earlier? Did you find what you needed? She looked at me like I was crazy and says, What are you talking about? So I say, Yeah, earlier, when I got home, I saw you go into my room and grab something. Did you get what you needed? Sorry I didn't say hi, I was on the phone with my mom. She asked me if I'm sure I saw her. I said yes, 100%. She tells me to grab my phone and go to her car ASAP that she needs to show me something. I have my phone on me and she grabbed my keys from the kitchen counter along with her purse and she drags me out the front door and into her car. She then tells me she got home maybe five minutes before we started talking. She had spent the night at her boyfriend's and hadn't been home all day. So she had no idea who I saw. I'll never forget the look on her face when she told me this. Complete fear and panic. She called the cops and they came along with the apartment manager. They checked the whole apartment and found no one. Nothing amiss. And they were in there a while checking every nook and cranny. The manager got maintenance to change our locks and gave us new keys that day. My friend tells me that for a week she'd been hearing noises from her bathroom, like bottles moving, and when she went to check, she found nothing. I have no idea who I saw going in and out of our room, but it looked exactly like my friend. I don't drink or do drugs. Not on meds. This was in 2014, and I still freak out when I think about it. I had a recurring nightmare of a pitch-black parasite sucking the life out of me. Sometimes it waited for me in dark corners to go to bed. My cats always slept on my bed during that time. For me, it was a very stressful time. I got an itch at the place of my chest where I dreamed the parasite was sucking my life out of me. I got sick and felt a pea-sized lump. I went to my doctor and they ordered a biopsy of that lump. As it turns out, I had male breast cancer at the age of 28. After I got well again, the dream never came back and my cats slept in their places again and not on my bed. The dream was creepy enough. What it made for me were my cats protecting me. Isn't it weird the kind of stuff that animals and your own subconscious brain can sense that you wouldn't think possible? Like, I don't personally see something supernatural here, just something natural that is absolutely amazing. Glad it was caught early enough and that you're okay, though I'm sorry you lost kitty sleep cuddles. I've shared this before, but it still confuses the hell out of my family. Edit. This happened last year. I copy and pasted it from my original post. The beginning of the story says, last night, but this was almost a year ago. We moved out of that house about six months after this happened. My husband recently took an overnight job to help us out during COVID. He's only been there about two weeks and working evening slash overnight, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Last night was no different. He left home around 8.15 p.m. Our daughter, age 11, and I decided to make it a movie night. Around 11 p.m., I heard keys in my back door and the usual sounds my husband makes when he comes home. I creeped out to the kitchen to make sure it was him, and it was. He told me he needed to grab his knee compression sleeve, walked down the hall, said hi to our daughter as he passed the living room and went upstairs. He came back down, gave me a kiss, and left again. We finished our movie and went to bed. 
In the morning when he got home, I made a joking comment about him forgetting his knee sleeve. He was genuinely confused, as I recall the previous night. Our daughter confirmed everything I said, and he still was acting confused. I pulled up our security motion camera on the phone to show him when he popped in quick, but there was no footage from the night before, or any other night of him coming home after he's left for work. My daughter and I both heard him, saw him, and touched him, but he was never home during that time. Nothing else out of the ordinary happened that night. We seriously have no idea what happened. Edit. To clarify, there is footage of that night, but it doesn't show him coming home at that time. The camera was on the back porch, not inside the house. We had two carbon monoxide detectors, one on each floor of the house. We moved out a few months later for unrelated reasons. My nana, great-grandma, and mom were very close but lived overseas from one another my whole life. They talked on the phone every Sunday, but because it was an international call, it was extremely expensive, so they took turns calling every Sunday at 8 a.m. to make the cost equal. However, due to a four-minute difference in clocks, nana always ended up calling at 8.04. Also, the caller ID never showed up. Mom called on a Sunday. Nana died on a Tuesday. The following week, we were sitting at the table eating breakfast, and Mom notices it's 7.50 a.m. Nana would have been calling any minute. She gets emotional, I comfort her. Then at 8.04 a.m., the mother effing phone rings. The caller ID reads, unknown caller. We look at each other like, what is this, some sort of sick joke? She answers, there's nothing but static at the other line. And some garbled voice recording. The only decipherable words in it are, we hope you enjoy your trip to paradise. Click, phone cuts off. Absolutely no explanation for that one. Still baffles me to this day. Edit. I've been wanting to tell this story for years now, but every time I find a creepy slash inexplicable thread, it gets buried. So glad people are finally hearing this one, lol. Some have said maybe someone was playing an elaborate prank, but I'd prefer to see it as Nana sending us one last hurrah. She really loved my mom and I a lot, as we did her too. She was a really kooky lady, and this ending was extremely fitting of her. I mean, I feel like there could be some explanation, but I sure don't know what it is. And as for the folks saying that it could be a prank, who would know the mom and Nana that well, and also be heartless enough to make a prank out of the loss of a loved one that soon? Right after quarantine started, I got a package in the mail. It was addressed to my name and my address and contained one pink starburst and nothing else. To this day, I have no idea who sent it or why. The return address was a vacant office space across the country. Edit. I did not eat it. The postmark matched the address, I believe, but it's been so long I'm not positive. There is one friend I think could have done it, but she has since passed away. It was not sent from overseas. It uses my full name, which I don't go by for anything except legal documentations. I have a nickname I use almost exclusively. We'd only been in this house for eight months before I got this, and we didn't slash don't really know our neighbors. And my Amazon account is under my husband's information. And thank you for the awards. My girlfriend and I are in a long-distance relationship. We typically take turns traveling between each other's countries, Australia and Canada. About two years ago, it was my turn to travel over to Australia to stay with her and her mom. For a bit of background, my girlfriend's room was built as an extension slash add-on to their garage, so to get to it, you had to walk through their garage to get to her room. About a couple weeks into my trip over there, I wake up at around 1 a.m. and the room is just glowing red. I look up at the ceiling and I see this black figure crawling through the ceiling. It moved in such an inhuman way, almost like it was breaking every one of its bones to move. I started screaming, which wakes up my girlfriend, and she looks up at the ceiling and starts to scream as well. Instinctively, I grab my pillow and whip it at the figure. The next thing I know, everything went black, and I'm waking up a few hours later. My girlfriend is fast asleep, so I think it was just some weird dream. At that point, I have to go to the washroom. So I walk through the garage and try to quietly open the garage door to get into the main house. Previously, her mom had mentioned that she was getting annoyed with us staying up late at night and going through the garage door to use the washroom. Since her mom's room was down the garage door hallway, each time we would open it, the door would click loudly and wake her up. So I'm standing there at the garage door and I try to open it as quietly as possible. As I turn the handle and the door clicks as I push it open, her mom just starts screaming at the top of her lungs. I thought I was out of rage for waking her up, so I immediately close the door and speed walk back to my girlfriend's room. 
climb into bed and gently nudge her awake to tell her that her mom is screaming. She gets up and goes to see whether her mom was still angry and try to de-escalate her the situation. About 20 minutes goes by and my girlfriend comes back into the room completely silent. She asks me if I saw the room glowing red earlier as well as a figure in the ceiling. I say yes, and she goes wide-eyed and says that she thought it was just a dream too. She then says that her mom wasn't screaming at me. Apparently when I opened the door, it did wake her up, but when she woke up, there was a black figure standing at the foot of her bed and it was slowly moving towards her. She then experienced a blackout as well and was woken up by my girlfriend checking in on her. Yeah, the entire house slept with the lights on for months after that. Edit. Thank you for the awards, kind strangers, as well as the emotional support. I mean, if this story is the truth, I'm not sure what to even say about that. I guess we didn't get confirmation about the girlfriend also seeing the thing in the red room, just her mom. And I feel like if the mom had sleep paralysis that the boyfriend knew about and had a dream about of himself, well, that, that would have been included. So from what we have to go on, that's creepy as hell. Was camping alone in a small one-person tent, all snug and secure in the tent, I went to sleep. Was broken by a clap of thunder at 3 a.m. to discover both the inner and outer tent was wide open. That was freaky. I fell asleep on the couch and got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Once I got there, I realized I didn't have to go. I headed towards the bathroom, but decided to turn around and go back downstairs to the couch. When I got there, I saw my body still asleep curled up on the sofa. I don't remember what happened after, and I don't know if it had to have just been a dream, but it still freaks me out to this day to think about it. I mean, that does sound like a dream, especially if you don't remember what happened after. But dreams that feel that real are really creepy. Like, when I dream of places, they're always, like, half-nonsense caricatures of actual places. The few times when I dream of a place and it looks like it actually looks, man, those dreams really stick with you. When I was 17, I had just gotten off my shift at Wendy's and was sitting in the parlor for my ride, and a middle-aged man approached me about a job offer. He asked me questions about my job at Wendy's and then told me about the job he was offering. He said there were other girls and they all lived in a dorm and the job came with benefits. It was in an office setting and other things, I don't remember, but the entire time every danger bell in my body was going off full blast. I felt like my body became a vibrator. I don't remember if after the multiple rejections from me he left or if my ride had come and I zoomed out of there. The only thing I can think to this day is, did I almost get S-trafficked? Once I was hired to load firewood into my aunt's basement, she lived alone and left the basement door wide open for me while she went out. I usually swing the interior basement door as wide as I can when I walk in and the door almost never closes completely. But once I heard it close and when I was about to grab another load, I saw that the deadbolt locked. When I walked, my arms are filled with firewood so I wouldn't be able to lock it myself. Looked out the window and checked the garage to see if she came home, but she wasn't there. The door itself was enclosed, so there was no wind to shut it. I tried various ways of slamming the door so it would lock by itself, but nothing worked. It's an isolated house, so I would have to have heard something drive up, and it's unlikely someone walked over just to lock the door and leave and time it while I was piling up firewood. And there's wooden steps, so I would have heard someone walking down them. It's the only time I've seen a deadbolt lock itself in my lifetime. I once got the neighbor staring at me outside my bedroom window while I was straightening my hair with no trousers on, and I immediately ducked under the window pane as soon as I saw him. He legit stood in this alleyway that connected the street's back gardens, arms crossed and there for at least 15 more minutes just staring through my window. I even got a picture of it. Pretty sure I was 15. That is definitely creepy, and if you got a picture of him, I hope to hell you called the police or something. Someone who would peep on a 15-year-old like that is someone who needs to be dealt with. I'm sorry, that came out harsh. No blame on you if you didn't. That stuff can be scary and confusing when you're a teen. I just hope that guy was caught. Just a normal Saturday night, I was watching TV Home Alone with my two dogs when I heard a banging sound coming from the basement. Legit sounded like somebody was just banging something on the appliances we had down there. Now there is no access into the basement from down there, only through the upstairs rooms that I was in and knew nobody could have come in and got past me. So, with this knowledge, I was not as scared as you may think, more curious as to what the heck the noise was. 
One of the two dogs, who is a meathead and who wants to fight everybody, also heard the noise and was now bolting down into the basement to investigate. I get down and see that it's my other dog banging his head into our dryer and chest freezer which are next to each other. My meathead dog just stood there watching, confused. So I approach my other dog and calm him down and we all go back upstairs. Now this freaked the heck out of me and upset me as it seems such very strange behavior for my dog to do. Fast forward only 30 minutes or so, the banging starts again. I instantly look over to my dog, but he's laid down, but now also aware of the noise downstairs. We ran down into the basement, and it is Meathead now banging his head in between the appliances. Again, I now call Meathead down, and we all go back upstairs. Nothing has ever happened again since that night three years ago now, so that ruled out brain tumors, which is what I read online about why maybe dogs bang their heads, but two dogs suddenly on the same night and it only affecting one of them at any given time? Three years and the three of us never talk about that night, lol. Added, wow, thanks for all the awards and upvotes. To answer a few questions, yes, I have posted this story before. I have a very normal life and this story is just way out there but legit truthful to my otherwise mundane life. A few folks said it might have been a rodent treat toy they were after. No, they were frenzied and hyperventilating. When they get things stuck under anything, they just cry and get me to get their stuff. I guess it boils down to just knowing your dog. I know instantly from their body language just what the deal is, but that night, I have never seen them so frenzied and upset. Also, it is otherwise a very nice basement, as basements go. I have never had a pest problem down there or in any other part of the house. Somebody mentioned that if it only happened three years ago, why did I not make a video out of it? My first instinct was to help my dogs to stop them from harming themselves. At no point were my first thoughts to go and grab my phone to capture the moments on film. Really surprised I have to mention that one, but people, keyboards, warriors. I mean, I would still kind of bank on a rodent or something. Just because you have a nicer basement and no history of rodent problems doesn't mean one didn't find its way inside, and a dog might react different with a rodent than with a treat or something. Still, who's to say? I apologize for grammar or spelling mistakes. There was a kid in another class at my school in sixth grade that was a genius. I don't mean like, oh, he's really smart because doesn't need to do the homework and still gets uh, hundreds. Like, he was doing advanced calculus with a local college professor after school. This kid was smarter than everyone. So one day our computer system for the entire school goes down. I was in a poorer area at the time, so this was normal. This has occurred many times, so normally it would affect us because we barely use laptops and such. The only class that was affected was the computer class. This kid was in computer class. Three or so hours later, when I'm in class with him during social studies, three guys with FBI jackets on and our local chief escort him out of the building. We were told nothing, but parents were told nothing. It had never hit the news. To this day, we have no clue what he did. Except every single teacher I've asked about this says they were also told nothing. I haven't seen the kid since, and I can't find a trace of him going to any other school or ending up in trouble. He just fell off the face of the earth with his parents. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the parents also disappeared and no one really looked for them after a month or so. Still think about that kid. I was about 10 when this took place, in my early 30s now. I remember it was well into late night hours and I saw my grandmother was standing at the front screen door looking outside. She was talking to someone. I saw she was talking to my dad. I couldn't see my dad's face because he was facing away from her. He was shirtless. He had a very large, distinct mole in the middle of his back, so I knew it was him. He was mumbling something I couldn't understand. My grandmother was telling him something along the lines of, if you love them so much, why did you go and do this? My mom wasn't there with us to see this. She had left moments before after she got the call letting us know my dad had been driving drunk and hit a mule on the highway. My dad was in the hospital hanging on to life. I've shared this before, but I still think it's an interesting story. I was exploring the area behind my house shortly after we moved in. The area back there had once been a small quarry that had since filled with water. It was a pit of pond that supposedly went straight down 60 feet if you stepped into it. I was walking along the edge and I came across a backpack filled with old video game cartridges and a set of clothing just laying on the ground. They were for the N64 and we found this around 2004 so they were outdated. Next to it was a set of clothing. The clothes were laying on the ground, spread out pants and shirt, and it looked like someone laying down. They looked like they'd been there a long time, same with the backpack. I told my parents and they called the cops. There had been no reports of missing children or anything in the area. We never got an explanation, but it was weird. 
Edit. Just to answer some questions, I don't think it was a prank. While we were new to the neighborhood, we were renters. Also, most of our neighbors were elderly. This happened in a rural Virginia town, and I can't imagine anyone wasting cartridges like that since most kids were lucky to have an N64. No people, adult or child, had been reported by families or the neighborhood as missing for years. They never searched the quarry because they never had any reason to think there was something wrong. My sister and I went out there every day for a year or so and just avoided that spot because it was creepy. As far as I know, they're still out there. I mean, maybe it's just a weird kid? I mean, I know it sounds like I'm joking, but honestly, kids do some strange things. Maybe it was like a fort for some kid and they set it up like that to keep their treasures or something. I don't know. It's hard to say. And yes, very creepy. I was driving home from work on a long, somewhat dark road. I'll admit I was tired and cold and just wanted to get home. Speed limit was 60 miles per hour and I was doing close to 70. Suddenly a girl with long blonde hair, a black coat with brown fur on the hood and jeans just showed up in front of my car. I knew there was another car to my left up ahead, but it was black and all I saw was that it was stopped before I saw her. I managed to maneuver around her. I was freaked out. I turned to a side street and stopped to figure out what was happening. Then a tall guy with a black coat and short hair gets out of the driver's side of the stopped car, grabbed her, dragged her to the car while she was fighting him, and put her back in the car. I called the police and gave them the description of the car and the direction it took off in. I never heard anything about it, and I have not stopped thinking about her since. It's been two years. Edit. Just in case anyone is curious or could even know something, the location was Lincoln, Rhode Island, USA, next to the high school. January, February 2019. The car was a new black sports, maybe car, with a taillight going all the way across the back of the car. George Washington Highway. I was putting my daughter to bed and she was talking about her godmother because we were reading a book that her godmother had gotten her. Her godmother died in 2019 of breast cancer. She was my very best friend, more like a sister, and she doted on my daughter. We are reminiscing about her and my daughter's twinkle light she has on her ceiling starts going off. They have multiple settings and they are on the rainbow setting. Not too weird, maybe they have a short or something. I go to turn them off, they aren't plugged in. I figure it's my friend saying hi. She loved rainbows. I'm not superstitious, but she promised to stick around and haunt us. I find it comforting. Those lights still go off every now and then. I had a schnauzer that could hear a cat stalk across a Persian rug. The slightest noise could wake her from a slumber and set off her constant barking. She made a great tent companion while on backpacking trips. Bears, raccoons, and skunks would all get fair warning if they came within range of our campsite. One morning, we woke up from a night without interruptions in the backcountry of southwest Colorado. And I found my tent's central guideline was no longer staked down by the aluminum stake that I'd used, but instead by a piece of aspen branch that had been carved into what looked like a tiki statue. Nothing too ornate but a snarling face with teeth had been carved from the bark, and it had previously been heated in a fire to give it a brown color. My dog didn't make a sound, and I apparently slept harder than I thought. I scrambled out of the tent and looked around the small alpine lake and saw no other campers nor any sign that people had been around. Cut my trip short and hauled butt the eight miles back to my car. Not a single other car in the lot of the trailhead. Dang, see, that is a pretty wild story. Like, this doesn't feel like something someone would make up. Then again, maybe it just isn't something I would think to make up. Still, I wouldn't know how to interpret that either, so I say a uh, smart move getting out of there. Well, not the scariest thing ever, but when I was 11, my family and I moved to another town because of my dad's job. We were only going to stay there for a year, and thankfully we were given a house in a closed community of about 20 houses made for army officials and their families. So one day my parents are out, and they take my baby sister, my older sister is in a friend's house, and I am left alone with our dogs for like two hours. I was playing in my room when I remember that the black socks for my Monday uniform, kind of like a suit you wear on Mondays, are drying in the backyard. I go there with my dog and utter out loud, I wish there was something to do, and not a moment later I hear some young voice say very clearly, then let's play. I turn around to see my normally hyperactive Golden sitting looking at me like nothing has happened. I freak out immediately and ran upstairs to my parents' bedroom. I turn on the TV and hide under the covers until my family arrived. They saw me sweating, scared, and paranoid at this point. They never figured out what happened, but try to make me feel better. Now the part that freaks me out is that each of the houses in the community was surrounded by three-meter-tall cinder block walls. 
The place where my socks were next to was a wall separating from another house, one that had no children. The other house to the left was over 20 meters away and behind another wall, and the wall behind my house separated us from nothing but a steep hill. There was no one who could have said that, and to this day it freaks me out every time I think of it. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.